Our job begins where most advisors stop. Saving money is great, but how do you spend it without risk in retirement? Welcome to Every Day is Saturday with Brad Gatto and Matt Stahl, partners and private wealth managers at Fiat Wealth Management. In this podcast, we aim to broaden your knowledge about the financial world we live in today and make the boring and complex financial decisions fun, informative, and educational. Join us on this journey where Brad and Matt will explore different strategies on how to spend your money without guilt and have peace of mind knowing you are spending it the optimal way in retirement. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Every Day is Saturday. My name is Matt Stahl. I'm a partner at Fiat Wealth Management. I'm here with my other partner, Brad Gatto. And I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. Good morning, Brad. Or afternoon. How are you, man? (laughs) Afternoon. Yeah, it's the afternoon. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. So, well, today we're going to be interviewing one of our very own, Juan Turan, and we're super excited about that. Before we get started, I want to hear what's new in your life, Brad. Well, today I thought it was the morning, and it's the afternoon. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, gives, that gives a good indication. Yeah, of how your it, day is. It's a busy time of year here at Fiat. Uh, as of this recording period, anyway, we're doing a lot of end of year tax planning, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it really is. Um, because unlike the CPA that gets to tell their client how much they owe in taxes, we get to teach people how to try to save money on taxes, but it is just very busy. So uh, outside of that, kids, as we always talk about, it seems like a redundant <laughs> uh, topic here, but uh, how about you? Uh, same thing. We, we uh, will be talking about soon, just some of the, based on the different times of the year, some of the different things we consider from a business perspective, you know, and both working with our clients and our, our team here as well. Um, so super excited about some of those things and kids activities as well. We're, uh, we're excited for snow. My kids are chomping out the bit. So. Well, overall, it sounds like you're just excited. Oh yeah. Just excited <laughs> as usual. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm even more excited about our topic for today. <laughs> So the, maybe for next episode, next podcast, we can look up a new word for you. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to talk okay. with Juan. So we often internally, Juan is often referred to as, as the most interesting man or person in the world. And so I'm super excited to dig into his story. I don't know about you. Yeah, way to set him up for success. I know. There. Yeah. I already I gave him a heads up before we got on here. So. All right. Without further ado, let's introduce Juan. So Juan, how'd you end up here? That's a long story. Um, where, where do we start? Um, let's let's uh, rewind a little bit uh, back to uh, where I, so I was born in Minneapolis, right? But both my parents are Spanish. And uh, they were only going to be here for a week. I thought you said we were going to rewind a little bit, and then we went right yeah, to where. But it's all, it's all, it's all—it's all related. They—they <laughs> um, they were only going to be here for a year, and I was born during that year. It ended up turning into uh, 15 years. Uh, so I uh, have another two brothers uh, that were born after me here in uh, Minnesota. And we were here until uh, the summer before I started high school, and then that's when they decided it was time to go back to Spain. So I, uh, I have the U.S. equivalent to a master's in business. I got that when I was studying in Spain. So I went to uh, high school and college in Spain, did a year in southern France, a uh, beautiful uh, Rhone Alps region, uh, city of Lyon. And uh, after that, uh, a year of internships, wrapped up my degree and came back to Minnesota. Uh, dabbled around a few jobs. Can we, can we pause for just a second? Because you... I know you grew up here and I know, you know, there's something to be said about home, right? But then you went to Spain and then you were in the mountains in France and then you came back to Minnesota. <laughs> but why? <laughs> oh, there, I, I don't know. Um, childhood nostal- nostalgia, I guess, brought me back. Um, I don't know. It's, it's where I grew up. I came back, didn't know how long I was going to stay, and uh, it's been 12 years, and here I am. So uh, it was good. You know, the, the most shocking part of moving back was after having spent a year snowboarding in the Alps, coming back and remembering, oh, you know, I learned how to snowboard at Highland, uh, Highland Hills. I'm going to go back there and uh, see what that's like. So uh, as soon as snow 
uh, stuck on the ground. I, I headed over to Highland and I, as I'm approaching the parking lot, I'm wondering where's, where's the hill. And then um, as a, you have to actually walk through the chalet to actually see the hill on the other side. I was like, oh, wow. This looked a lot bigger when I was a kid before I had seen what the elves were like. The best part about it is that they actually have a ski lift. Um, don't know, don't know why. It's, it doesn't doesn't take you very far, but there's a ski lift. Um, that's that's kind of a joke, but uh, those those hills are are uh, small in comparison to what I was snowboarding over in Europe, um, and now they've become the norm again for me. So now that now they look huge. They're, they're fantastic. <laughs> so you moved back 12 years ago, obviously you, you got to find a, a way to support yourself. What, uh, what'd you do when you moved back? So I started working for a software consulting company and I traveled around the world, uh, with this company doing training and consulting for video surveillance, uh, software, uh, products. Uh, that was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was good, but in that process, I, uh, decided that I wanted to, you know, wanted to do something that I wanted to do since I was a kid and just never, never really figured was a real goal. And I jumped into, uh, law enforcement. I became a cop with the ultimate goal of becoming a detective. Um, so started on patrol. Uh, as as all or most uh, law enforcement officers uh, do, and uh, after five years, became a detective. Uh, I was a financial crimes investigator, uh, so worked with uh, the Minnesota Financial Crimes Task Force. That was a lot of fun, and and things were going great. Uh, I always had an eye on this. Cr- career as my follow-up career and I have varied interests so Matt says the most interesting man on earth I I would hardly say so uh, but I do have a variety of interests varied um, interests. that are you know they're they're varied Matt and I met in 2017 I want to say that sounds right uh, yes and that is because of the varied interests that I have, one of them is yoga. I, so I, I became um, a registered yoga teacher in 2016. And uh, the school that I got my uh, certification through that I went to school with uh, is owned by an old friend of Matt's. I believe she was um, a neighbor of yours, right? Years and years ago. Um, of Matt's own varied interests. Uh, he also <laughs> owns, he owns a gym uh, and he was looking for yoga instructors at the time. So he reached out to his yogi friend uh, who put the two of us in touch. And I started working uh, at that gym teaching. I think I was teaching what, three, three classes a week or so for a while. And I dropped it down. Yeah. Then I dropped it down to a, a couple classes, but uh, that's how I got to know Matt. And that's how I got to know Fiat. And I got to know what Matt was doing um, and became very interested in, in how things are just different here at Fiat. One thing led to another. And during the summer of 2020, I was getting ready to depart from my career in law enforcement. At the same time, Fiat was expanding everything seemed to align right. And uh, that's, that's how I ended up here. So just to make sure that the listeners understand though, like at the same time, you were a financial crimes detective, you were a yoga instructor. So I just want to make sure everybody understands because how many financial crime detective yoga instructors do you know that also at the time, I believe had a Harley, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Yes. And Uh some other, and some other things. I, yeah, I have to tell my, I have to tell my side of this. Cause, uh, my, my friend that introduced us, we were new owners of a, a gym and it happens to be a, a CrossFit affiliated gym. So it's, uh, you know, a functional fitness gym and her description to me, it was something along the lines of <laughs> like, you gotta get a load of this guy. <laughs> so, I mean, when we're out, when we're out seeking yoga instructors, a certain image pops in your mind and it is not someone cruising up on a Harley <laughs> that is six foot. How tall are you? Six foot. 
Six foot six. Six foot six. So that's not what you really picture as a big, you know, six foot six tougher guy on a Harley showing up. And uh, so that's how that's how we we uh, first met Juan. And it was it was a perfect fit for us. And, you know, we became quick friends and continued our our connection and our conversations. And I actually remember having a conversation with Juan on, out on a rooftop when he was considering, you know, looking different directions from what he, what he was doing. And so I want to go back to something. You, so you had said, you know, we had that conversation. You said there was something, you know, different. Like, what, what do you mean by that? So there's something different at Fiat. What felt different to you or felt like it made sense at that point? Uh, the overall approach that, that Fiat has to financial planning um, is, is different, right? I've, I've spoken with other financial advisors uh, in, you know, in my life. And it always had, um, no disrespect to any other advisors that are listening to this, but it always had kind of a crunchy feel to it. You know, there was, it was always very stuffy, you know, these crunchy, the uh, the, you know, the first question out of, out of every financial advisor's mouth that I've ever spoken to is, um, uh, how much do you have to invest? Um, so it never felt personal and, you know, m- money touches every aspect of life. So it's, it's a very personal thing. Um, and, and it was just different, uh, when I got to know you and then a few uh, weeks later, I, I asked you what you did for work and you told me that you were a financial advisor. I, I was blown away. I was like, no way. Tell me more. Um, I remember, uh, <laughs> he met you two weeks after he met you. He was like, you're a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first person to say that. So. <laughs> oh, I broke the first um, rule of podcast. So I, and I just I, pounded I, my desk. I remember, uh, one, I, I don't know. We, we got together for dinner a few t- different times at a few of our favorite restaurants in Minneapolis. And I remember one specific conversation where you kind of told me about your process and, and how you get to know people and how, and how much of a, a truly personal relationship that you establish with your clients driven home. Uh, when I got to meet Brad for the first time, and one of the first conversations that I had with Brad, Brad, I hope you're okay talking about this on the podcast now, but, uh, the, the grocery store test, you know, that's, you know, that was one of the first things that you told me about, about your guys' approach here at, at Fiat, uh, which I think aligns very much uh, with, with what Matt told me that first conversation back in 2017. Um, so that's, that's what's different. And, you know, in, in this first, just over a year, right? Uh, 14 months, let's make it sound more. Uh-huh. Uh, in these first 14 months and the uh, relationships that I've established with the people that have started to work with Fiat, uh, uh, with me here at Fiat, I've, I've truly come to see that, right? I mean, I, I could say, you know, I'm, I'm on a first name basis with all of them. I know about all of their, their families. We, we talk about, uh, you know, what, what they're doing on, on the weekends and on the holidays and, um, they feel like extended family. And that, that is, that is what I truly, um, love about working at Fiat. I'm going to ask the, the tough question that most people don't want to answer, but how about three years down the road? You know, what do you see? What does that look like? What kind of picture pops in your head? Great question. Um, I hope to, I mean, what we do here, I think is, is unique. It's special. And, um, the beautiful thing is I know that no matter what happens at the end of the conversation that I have with someone, uh, no matter how they came to us, um, whether it was uh, by listening to this podcast or attending one of our workshops in person or virtually, uh, I know that what we do here will leave them in a better place, right? Uh, So with that in mind, I hope to extend that to as many people as I can in the, in the course of the, of the next three years and, and seeing Fiat uh, grow even more in just the year that I've been here uh, has been very exciting. And I, I, I guess I, I can't wait to see what, uh, how much more growth uh, happens in the next three years, you know, who, who else is going to join the team and how, what are they going to bring to the table? Uh, all of us are um, very different in our own ways, which, which makes it 
uh, even more interesting. Yeah. So. Well, before we, we move on to a little bit more of the personal side, uh, I just want to say for the listeners, uh, Juan, obviously short in tenure uh, in, in this industry in general, but obviously with your background, your education, the life experience that you have, uh, Matt and I obviously not only appreciate you being a part of the team, but I think having you come in the way that you did has made you a better advisor because you're able to start with a clean slate uh, and understand, not be trained that it's numbers first, families second, uh, and then have us to, have to, to unwire that hard wiring that gets put into a lot of people in our industry. And so you're the most detailed person we have on the team. So in that respect, by far a rock star as it comes to uh, some of the detail planning that we were trying to get done for the families that we work with. And so it's been a lot of fun. That said, for podcast purposes, I just want people to know Juan more as a person. So Matt and I just going to kind of end our time together here by doing a little uh, spitfire at you with some, some kind of fun questions. And so don't think too hard, just uh, answer these questions. Uh, however, you see fit or whatever comes top to top of mind. So I'll, I'll start with the first question. It's Friday night. You don't have any plans and you're trying to make plans. What are you doing? That's, that's not terribly difficult. I will um, probably buy a thick steak and a bell pepper or some jalapeno peppers. I'll light up the Kamado uh, grill that I have. Um, and I will, throw those babies on there, uh, grill them, <laughs> play some Spanish music and, uh, eat them with either, uh, a glass of wine or beer. And that beer may be purchased or brewed, uh, by myself. Again, <laughs> like I said, I have, <laughs> I had varied interests, like I said, so I do, uh, dabble in brewing beer, uh, once in a while. So so yeah, that, that would be a, a perfect Friday night for me. Maybe a nice, you know, a good movie in the background. And uh, if, I, if I don't have plans, that's going to be my plan. Okay, so now a follow-up to that, Matt. You can ask the next question, but what if, if there's a movie playing in the background, what's the go-to? Oh, man, that's tough. Well, I have, so of my three brothers, my older brother is, is a movie fanatic. He has seen every movie uh, has ever been produced. It's, it's amazing. And on that, he's, he has, we have a shared note on our iPhones uh, with the list of movies that I have not yet seen that I must see. Uh, and I don't know how many movies are on that list. Well over a hundred, pro probably over 200. So I will pick something off that list. That's what I've been doing lately. Uh, but if I have nothing, I mean, my probably all time favorite movie uh, is Pulp Fiction. I, I love Pulp Fiction. It's it's just I, I feel like it's a geniusly put together uh, movie. I feel like I could have guessed that. I should have guessed. This would have been more entertaining if we had to guess the answer to these questions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Question number two. To give everyone some context here, every time we bring something up, it always seems that Juan had some job that was related to whatever topic we're talking about. So, so Juan. What is the most unique job you've ever had? I, that's, that's a good question. I don't know. I feel like all, everything I've ever done has been uh, unique in its own way. Um, I would agree with that. <laughs> I don't want to sound cliche, but how about uh, working, working here at Fiat? Uh, and it's because quite, I mean, quite frankly, um, my, like I said a, a few moments ago, money does touch every aspect of life. So I end up having the deepest conversations with uh, the people that, that come to us, uh, the families that we serve and those that, even those that just come for a consult and are looking to get a few questions answered and move on. We end up talking about, you know, some of their deepest and, and um, most uh, stressful uh, things in life, because that's, that's what, what's affected, you know, by, by their finances, by their, their, their money and the decisions that they make around, around that. Uh, so I find that to be truly unique and, and very impactful. All right. Good answer. You still have a job. <laughs> uh, other than your family, uh, what do you miss most about Spain? All of them. Uh, I guess the culture around food. 
uh, more specifically, you know, um, after spending a decade living in Spain, um, I, I remember coming back to the U S and feeling rushed my first restaurant experience, you know, got there and I felt like food was thrown in front of me way too quickly. And then I had the bill in front of my face and it's 25 minutes later, I'm getting, you know, ushered out of the restaurant because you know the the restaurant business here is all about turning tables and um there's nothing wrong with that per se but i wasn't used to that anymore um food in spain is is an event it's a culture it's you know when you get together with some friends uh to go out to eat uh you'll reserve a table and it's your table for the night and when i say for the night i mean you will be out to dinner for two three even four hours um uh, and you'll see your server once in a while, uh, but they're not in a rush and you're not in a rush. And it's all about the conversation and it's all about uh, who you're with. And, and it's, it's, a, it's an event. Uh, so more than the, the food, which is delicious, it's the culture around food or you know, the, the simple fact that if you walk into any, any bar, restaurant, pub in Spain and you order a drink, it won't come by itself. It always comes with a tapa. And the tapa is just a small portion of, could be anything, uh, really. Um, and I miss that too, you know, because when you walk into a bar here, you order a beer and, and that's all you get. Um, it's, it's nice to have, you know, something to munch on too. And something that's more than just some potato chips. I mean, we're talking, you know, you could get, what are some good tapas like a Spanish tortilla, which has nothing to do with uh, the, tor when you think of a tortilla here, you think, well, that's what I used to wrap my fajitas in Spain. They're different. It's, it's like an omelet. Um, in fact, if you order a Spanish tortilla outside of Spain, they call it the Spanish omelet. Uh, so it's kind of like an omelet, but you don't have it for breakfast. It's, it's actually like a lunch or a dinner food um, or a small, they make these small little sandwiches uh, that could have anything in them. Um, Spanish ham is amazing. Uh, Spanish cheeses are amazing. I don't know if you've ever spoken to um, a Spanish person, but uh, they'll tell you that uh, everything in Spain is amazing, right? It's kind of the, the, my big fact. Do you count? Spain. Huh? Do you count? I'm no longer in Spain, so. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? We're talking to you right now. So have you seen uh, my big fat Greek wedding with, so you know the grandpa who, is, is it is it the grandpa who's, who's always talking time. about how everything's better in Greece? It's a, it's it's the same thing. You talk to a Spaniard, they'll they'll talk Spain up. Um, everything was, you know. Did you know that soccer was invented in Spain? <laughs> I don't think it was. Somebody's gonna fact check our podcast now. Uh, uh, All right, <laughs> you're up, Matt. One last final question. So you and I both share an affinity for exploring and learning and specifically exploring different books. So I'm going to ask you to narrow it down to what is your top book at this moment in your life? That's a, that's a, that's a tough one, Matt. Uh, at any given time, I'm, I'm reading three or four books at a time. How about, I haven't read it in a while. I've read it many times, but one of the most impactful books that I read growing up. I think I was, I don't know, I was in, in my early teens, the first time I read it, and I've read it many times since then, uh, has been Sophie's World. Have you read that book? It's a fantastic book, Sophie's World. Highly recommend it. There you go. We'll see how many podcast listeners pick that up now. Uh, after listening to your story and how interesting you are, I, I would assume everybody now wants to read that. Uh, and I, I gave you a compliment before, and I, and I mean it in our industry, as I see it, knowing what I know, if I were a consumer and trying to find a financial advisor, and I was going to kind of list out the, the priorities of what was important to me for an advisor, how much they care for my outcomes is the thing I would prioritize the most. Because at the end of the day, if your advisor is resourceful, whether they have 50% of the knowledge they need to have, or 100% of the knowledge they need to have all stored in their head, uh, we all have the resources to get to the answers and the outcomes that these these families need. So what really, really matters in today's 
uh, day and age is having somebody that genuinely cares uh, and wants to well, work overtime really to get to the right outcome uh, for any particular family or person. And so in that regard and in that respect, uh, we're very, very lucky to, to have you as a part of the team uh, because you genuinely care. We've seen that here over the last 14 months. And so it's been a lot of fun to get to know you. There's a lot more to Juan. I feel like this could be like a, a five yeah, to 10 part series <laughs> uh, type episode. Yeah. Cause I feel like, I feel like we're like, uh, you know, not doing Juan justice and that like the people need, there's a lot more that, that, that needs to be told here. So uh, we'll have to have you back on to have a, uh, a repeat or, or part two. Uh, or something like that. But uh, so thanks for joining us, Juan. Yeah, thank you. You're giving me way too much credit, though. I'd love to be back on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Love being around. Uh, everybody, as always, thank you so much for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Juan, do us a favor. Say that. Can you say that in Spanish? Todos los días son sábado. If, uh, if you want to reach out to us here at Fiat, our website is going to give you all the information that you need. Uh, again, that's fiatwm.com. So again, www.fiatwm.com. If you have not done so already, uh, and this episode should, should make you want to subscribe to our podcast uh, so you don't miss an episode. We would love it if you would share it with your family and friends. As always, I'm Brad Gatto here with my partner, Matt Stahl, and we will see all of you next Saturday. Hey, man, we don't record the podcast on Saturday. Yeah, Matt, every day is Saturday. Uh -huh. Thank you for listening to Every Day is Saturday. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Fiat Wealth Management or Foundations Investment Advisors. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Investment advisory services offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.